Why, hello, everybody. Good to see you all again. Um, yeah, so just picking up from where I was last time, really. What have we got going on? So I think I finished the pyramids last time, didn't I? There we go. Yep, so the two workers are here in my capital, Mos and Carney. They're looking ready to work. Um, yeah, it's often weird coming back after a little bit of time to a game and trying to work out what you were doing. But the first thing I see is that negative five unhappiness. That's a... Uh, it's not going to do us very well, so these workers are going to have to get going pretty quickly, I think. Um, so I'm just going to check my tech to see if I've got calendar. No, I haven't got calendar yet, but it's three turns away, so that's pretty close. And trapping was also needs to be got. So, okay, yes, yeah, so I remember now. So this worker was heading over to this sugar, and then these two were going to wander around the territory. There we go. So what was my plan? My plan... As, as I remember it, uh, was basically to, I think, Congo. This is going to be one of our potential targets. Um, I mean, look at King Solomon's Mines. That's, that's, that's got to be winnable, I think. If I can get hold of that, I can get hold of that six production a turn, that's really going to help me to, uh, long term down the line, I think, especially if Copenhagen, Mr. Bluetooth, my favourite friend, especially if he decides to try and fight me, which, to be honest, looking at the diplomacy, yeah, I mean, look at all that red. He's uh, he's not particularly happy, is he? He thinks I'm settling too close to him. He uh, he thinks that his lands are, are, are too small. He wants ours, and he denounced us after about ten turns. You probably remember from the first video. So let's press on. Pyramids were done last time, so we've got the two workers, which is great. But now we've got to think. Now, what what does the capital need to build? Now. In order to get those early settlers, in order to specify that I got the pyramids, I did sacrifice a little bit of equipment in the capital. So you can see I don't actually have a monument, I don't have a library um, at the moment. You know, the city-state is the only thing giving me faith, I've got none of that coming in. So potentially I think some of, that, some of the little buildings are going to do me well to have. My one concern at the moment, however, is that even though I've got spearmen on the way, in Timok, and I've got another one a long time down the lines in, in my third city, a, oh, I'm going to say Agida, I'm going to call it this time, I'm going to, pronunciation is going to get worse and worse, I can only apologise from now. I, my problem is going to be, is the army I'm going to have enough to stop me from being hit by the barbarians, and really, do I want to be prioritising taking the city-state over my growth? So I'm going to compromise, I'm going to build the monument, and I think I'm going to get a spearman after that, uh, which should give me three foot units. I, I can get a few range troops on top of that, and that'll give me that'll give me a stable footing. So that's not going to be too bad a too bad too bad a place to be. So here come the composites. I'm going to drive away those archers. I think those are these are not doing me any favors by standing there. This worker is going to make its way over to the incense. I think that would be a good a good thing for me to get once the calendar comes into effect. And I've got a second worker here that. You know what, I think I think these dies, those dies over there are gonna be they're gonna be good to get. So I'm gonna get those ones heading over in that direction as well. Now this composite, he was scouting around this territory, taking a look, seeing what the defences of this city state is like, which one archer, you know, that's not gonna add too much, we're not gonna worry about that. But I'm also gonna get rid of this uh, this this barbarian camp. I think this is gonna be a nice nice little amount of experience for me just to take a few shots level him up a little bit i think he's only level two so we can get one more level out of him which should serve as well so i know that technically i could be building something useful with this guy while i'm waiting for calendar but for the sake of three turns i'm just gonna i'm gonna keep him there and we're gonna press on so let's have a look milan ah oh, look at that ally with them so they liked the fact that I built the pyramids for them and suddenly I've got a plus six per turn in the way of culture that's not bad at all and look at that minus 0.75 per turn I've probably got that for what 21 turns 22 turns the maths it's a I'll be honest listeners it's it, it's a dark night it's really wet and windy out there I've been at work all day and my mind is all over the place so maths is not going to be my strong point this evening I can only apologize Okay, so Milan is doing well for us. So these workers are going to stay there. Um, oh, look, the archers decided that maybe a fight isn't on the cards, but I'm going to fight them anyway. See, look at that. I, I swear, you know, the video will play back, I'm sure, but I swear that was going to be at least 60% damage for me there. It's a bit of an unlucky fight for me. Uh, I'm going to get this guy to come down here now. I think it's just in terms of 
times of ease. These guys can wait there. And I'm just going to keep taking some shots at these guys. It's all going to be good. So my most pressing concern on my mind at this particular moment is Copenhagen. I, I just get the feeling that especially Denmark, who is, is in from, from what I can remember, whilst he's trustworthy, he's, he's up straight about it. He's not going to he's not going to backstab you. I could be wrong about that, but he, he's also obviously from from Denmark's traits, the additional pillaging, the ability to embark quicker. Um, I think that's about it. I think is it embark movement plus one. I think for Denmark, it's, I'll have to check that at some point. Um, they're going to be war hungry at some point, aren't they? Here we go. So China. This is my first issue with him. Um, doesn't like our relationship with Milan. I quite like cultured city states. I'm not going to lie. Having having ally with Milan isn't going to be. I, I would fight over that. I think that's going to be good for me in the long run. So I have a choice. I can either smooth things over. I'm sorry this has caused a divide. You know, it's going to have a minimum negative penalty. But if I remain allies with Milan, or if I do anything else to like them, then then you know she's going to get a little bit more annoyed. So I'm going to be straight up. I'm going to be honest with her. I'm going to tell her to get over it. Seems a bit harsh, and you know I'm probably going to get negative penalties for that in terms of diplomacy. But you know, uh, worse, worse things have happened. I'm sure we'll be fine. I find with the AI and the diplomacy on this game, often the computer, for whatever reason, it, it considers lying to be worse than actually doing anything, anything meaningful, if, if that makes sense. You know, you can, you can send a nuke and obviously they won't like that, but if you lie about sending a nuke and then send a nuke, they, they're really going to dislike you. It's, it's the lying aspect that seems to give you the biggest hit. Now that, that could be completely wrong. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you for certain, but that's how it seems to me anyway. So we're just uh, just moving these workers around. These all seem to be doing fine. Now a traditional tradition start traditional tradition, there we go. If you're taking the tradition social policy, there's a bit of an incentive to keep your armies within the cities that they have been made in, or at least a city in your empire. So you can see here that the spearman is is garrisoned inside the city because obviously if you've got tradition you don't take any penalty uh, in terms of gold income if they are garrisoned but as I'm playing Liberty I've got a little bit more freedom as to where these guys can venture so I'm gonna get actually you know what I've got a little bit of time I'm gonna get this guys I'm gonna go over back to Mount Kilimanjaro if you remember the, the upgrade for Mount Kilimanjaro the altitude training that's that's quite handy I, I like that that's I, I think I'm gonna give as many troops as I can that upgrade Perhaps even thinking about seeing if I can get a city nearer to Mount Kilimanjaro. I mean, I'm not so sure that's going to be possible in terms of tile placement, but, you know, I'll take a look at that in a bit. So, again, really I should probably be getting libraries at some point. I, I think maybe the education, the science, you know, the lack of that is, is probably going to give me some negative repercussions in the near future. But for now, I'm going to focus on some archers, I think. You know, commit, commit to the cause. Well, we'll do that. Okay, so that archer is, uh, he's been taken care of. There we go. Incense is going to come my way in, how many turns was that? Seven turns. Um, these guys can do the same. These workers can move over to the dyes, which is great. And, oh, the boat's vanished again, so I'm going to just start taking a shot at the encampment. The only problem I find with taking encampments with ranged units is that you can you end up killing the person inside the encampment and I, you can just guarantee that as soon as you kill them they're going to spawn one right back in the middle of the encampment just waving at you thinking hey well didn't when you glad you killed me now my friends come feels like a bit of a waste of time but you know it's going to keep giving me keep giving me the experience where it matters I think this guy's actually got to level 3 so maybe killing people isn't going to do me the best of, of use at this stage, but I like I like killing people. Perhaps actually with my next policy, I've got one coming up in four turns. I might think about getting the first track of honor, which will give me a little bit more power against barbarians. It'll, it'll give me some culture incentive to kill them. I quite like having it. It, it, it just, to me, it feels like, you know, you, you beef up. Yeah, you beef up a little bit. Ah, Pantheon, there we go. So, that's that's quite a good strategy actually. I haven't actually built a single faith building. I haven't got any other source of faith income except from just one accidental friendship with Jerusalem. 
which is pretty good. I'm not going to I'm not going to complain about that at all. Um, now, let's have a quick look. I can't remember off the top of my head whether there are any religions in the world at the moment. No religions. Now, it's it's 2000 BC. It's still pretty early. I, I find unless you've got a religious sieve on the map, most religions don't tend to get founded before about zero BC, whether that's deliberate or not. Um, you know, with the little baby Jesus is is difficult to tell. But I find that, yeah, maybe starting from 2000 BC, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, so am I going to make my own religion or am I not going to am I not going to be fussed about it? You see, I, I'm, I'm playing wide. I, I feel that I'm going to need a religion. So I'm going to try and give myself a pantheon that is going to give me faith, because I think faith is going to be my limiting factor at the moment. So let's see what we've got. We've got a few plantations, which I think has probably been taken. And that's culture anyway. Um, we don't have any gold or silver. We don't seem to have any salt that I can see. What else? Desert. We're, I mean, we've got one or two desert towns, but those aren't really going to be worked without Petra. So um, we're not on a tundra. We seem to be pretty warm in this climate, which, you know, is not a bad thing at all. Wine and incense. Here we go. One culture and one faith for wine and incense. You see, here we go. There's a load of wine down here. This, this could be a little bit of an investment for the future if I can fit another city in here. But I have a feeling... I'm not going to be able to put another city in here between between the city state and where Denmark has put his cities. And you know, there's no space within four towers for that. So if I were to go for the wine and incense, it would just be would just be plus one faith, plus one culture. That for me, it's, it's at this stage, it's not it's not good enough. Um, but I can't think of a better option at this precise moment. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the traditional ones uh, are for you know, tall cities. If you want to grow growth really high, that's when you go for the plus food. I find the happiness buffs at this stage of the pantheon they don't really give you enough for what it is. You know what? I'm I'm actually I'm going to go for the wine. I think I'm going to go for the wine and incense. I it, it seems like a bit of the waste, but you never know. It might it might do me some good in the long run. So. 